Killshot was released on September 14th, 2018. That's right. It's been over five years. And man, did a lot of things happen that I did not think would happen. But it's still one of the most viewed and talked about topics on YouTube, especially amongst the reaction community. It quite literally feels like it just happened yesterday, and I think it's because we can still see the effects from that battle to this day. Killshot's initial release absolutely broke YouTube. If you were around during that time, you know that there were so many comments in the first hour on that video that it literally would not let you comment anymore. Killshot was number one trending on YouTube for over 10 days in a row and garnered 38 million views in the first 24 hours it was published, making it the 12th most viewed video in the first 24 hours in YouTube history at the time. It was also the largest debut of a hip hop song in the history of YouTube. It also charted at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. It's currently sitting at just over 467 million views, still garnering over 50,000 new views per day. It's officially in the top 1300 most viewed YouTube videos of all time. And even as recording this, one of my most recent YouTube notifications is on a video I did about the this very subject over four years ago. So needless to say, this is still very much a topic of conversation. In this video, I'm gonna focus solely on the effects it had on MGK. And if you guys wanna see how it affected Eminem, please leave a comment telling me to do so, like the video, share it around, help it spread throughout the algorithm because these videos take a lot of time to make. But in order to accurately depict the outcome of this diss battle and see the timeline of effects that Killshot had on Sir Coulson, we have to go back and see how this all started. Before I dive deeper into the lore of Killshot versus Rap Devil, this video is already copyright claimed because of images that I'm using. So gotta thank the awesome sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. Listen everybody, let me tell you about a game. That is perfect for you if you bored, go download it today. The graphics are the dopest and you know it's free to play. Y'all already know I'm talking about this game called Raid. This is the perfect deal, cause it's half of the thrills. They got some champions that make me wanna kiss, Mary kill. And I'ma kiss Kalia, cause you know she looking kinda cute. And the champ is kinda cute, can kill anyone that she Troops, put her on the squad and she gon' make some quick work out of you And do you so dirty that you gonna end up on the news And I'm a Mary Queen Eva cause you know that I'm a king And every king's gotta have a queen to be on the team She my right hand lady, Ray game going crazy She'll lead me straight to the W and she won't be hesitating And I'm killing Will and Cross King cause they always be killing me Killing everybody else that isn't on the team So if you wanna challenge me, scan the code that's on the screen I'll be waiting in arenas handing out some RIPs Yo, shout out to the awesome people over at Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Raid is introducing the return of Prime Gaming Drops. And so now, Amazon Prime members can earn themselves some special in-game goodies. They also just dropped a dope new champion, Xena Warrior Princess. Xena possesses incredible skills that showcase her fighting ability, allowing her to bypass her enemies' defenses and deal massive damage based on the number of buffs that they have. She is an iconic 90s warrior that you can unlock through the brand new Champion Pass feature, but you can also summon her through Ancient or Sacred Shards during the special summoning boost every week between November 10th and January 19th. And shout out to Universal Studios for giving the licensing to Raid for this. If you're a first time player and have never played Raid, scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description and you're going to get some dope rewards. I'm talking the epic champion Talia from the Sacred Order faction, as well as many other useful things like energy refills, skill tomes, and XP boosters. And all of these rewards are going to be waiting for you guys right up here in the top right corner in your inbox. Just click that bad boy and there's your rewards. And once again, thank you so much to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. In 2012, MGK, then 22 years old, tweeted that Eminem's daughter Haley, then 16, was quote, hot as f MGK got a ton of backlash over this tweet and was asked to remove this tweet by Eminem's management, even though Eminem states in this interview with Sway Calloway that he wasn't even aware of the tweet until a year and a half later. Just for the record, the, the thing that was going on that he was saying about my daughter, I didn't even know about that until like literally like a year and a half later. In the following years, MGK claims that he was banned by Eminem from going on a Shade 4-5, which was the radio station owned by Eminem, subsequently showing that Eminem was trying to halt MGK's career. In response, MGK did a number of things, the first of which was a radio freestyle that he did on Power 106 FM on May 16th, 2017. In this freestyle, he threw shots at Eminem over the alleged ban from Shade 4-5. I'm my favorite rapper alive since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45, I wonder. Almost a year later, Later, on March 1st, 2018, another shot was thrown on a featured verse he did with my personal favorite rapper of all time, Tech 9 In this song, MGK has a few more jabs at Eminem, including a line about needing a doctor, and not the one from Compton, referencing Dr. Dre, and also the infamous You Just Rap, You're Not God's line. As a result, on August 31st, 2018, Eminem responded to the multiple callouts on his song, Not Alike, from his surprise album, Kamikaze. MGK then responded to Eminem's shots on Not Alike just a few days later on September 3rd with the infamous Rap Devil. 11 days later on September 14th, 2018, exactly four years ago today, Eminem then responded with Killshot. So again, how did this directly affect MGK? Well, honestly, 
It wasn't looking so hot at first. In the following days after Killshot, MGK was directly dealing with the extreme backlash of the battle and not in a very good way. On September 20th, 2018, MGK was a guest on The Breakfast Club where he spoke about the beef with Eminem and promoted his new upcoming EP, Binge, that would release the following day. We'll get to that in a minute. During this interview, MGK was visibly frustrated with the responses over the beef and had several moments where he straight up looked like an ass. Most notably, when he made fun of Eminem for a stutter during the Sway Calloway interview that didn't even happen and then MGK proceeding to stutter more than 60 times throughout the entire interview. He said he wants you to shut the fuck up. I wish he that would shut the fuck words. up. You know what else? He, no, no, quote him correct. You're talking about from the interview? Yes. Quote him correctly. I don't shut, remember. Sh 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 shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Because MGK clearly has never stuttered before. Oh, was, the, was the EP plan? Shot. I, re yeah. I replied to his shot. Oh, he right, he I mean, gave me a shot on comment. I woke I'm up to that. No, he and I, He no, he he's a recluse, so we we didn't. We didn't speak. That is as, as as man to man as it gets. All, all the headline said was, okay. I, I, "I guess it, it was it was a silly comment. It's, it's some it's some. I get I get it if it was like, uh, but but th th that's until no 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 no." This. I made a video about that very specific interview at the time if you guys want to go check that out to get some further information about why it was so rough. It's also arguably one of the funniest videos I've ever made. But for casual fans or even fans that were kind of on the fence about the entire situation like I was, this interview was absolutely the tipping point. His true personality really shined through and made me not like him as a person at the time. There was even a segment where MGK spoke about Killshot in which he said that he had a song ready in response, but once he heard Killshot, he felt like it didn't warrant a response at all. Killshot was, was a leg shot. I had a clip ready, I heard kill shot, and I put that back in the holster. This is especially upsetting knowing about the monstrosity that was coming with Binge, but again, we'll get to that in just a second. During this time, it was also revealed that MGK staged this very photo where he asked the entire crowd to flip off the camera, turned around, and secretly unveiled the kill shot shirt, not letting the crowd in on what he was doing. Furthermore, the very next day, my stance on MGK would get way worse with the release of Bench. Due to the high traffic that his name now had in the Google searches, Rap Devil and Killshot both were the top two highest Google searched phrases of September 2018, by the way. MGK had the bright idea to capitalize off of this traffic by releasing Bench on September 20th, 2018, which I personally feel like is one of the worst projects I have ever heard from any notable artist, and this was extremely disheartening. As someone who was well aware of MGK at the time and had been for many years, I knew that this guy could rap very well. Even Rap Devil showed several flashes that MGK could absolutely hold his own in rap. But if you listen to Binge, this is absolutely not the case. Binge was a nine track EP that was released one week after Killshot, and it was also very evident that every new song on this EP was made during that time. It was absolutely clear that MGK was trying to profit from the situation, which again frustrates me due to him saying that he had this second disc ready, but didn't release it, even though he clearly knew it would get numbers for his EP. I personally don't believe that the track even exists but that's besides the point. I have an entire video explaining why that EP was so bad that you can check out up at the top right here, but just know that it's not just me. Even five years later, it still only has a 35% approval rating from users on Google, which is a percent up from last year. Even with all eyes on MGK, the EP only sold 21,000 copies first week, some reports even being as low as 15,000. This was a major hit and an extreme drop off in numbers from his previous project, Bloom, that dropped in 2017, which had 57,000 first week sales. A few months would go by and very little was mentioned about this beef anymore, and MGK remained relatively quiet whilst working on his new and upcoming project, Hotel Diablo, which would release on July 5th, 2019 to generally positive reviews, yet low album sales. At just 39,000 first week sales for a full length project, it seemed as if MGK could not recapture the numbers he was hitting before the beef with Eminem. Personally, I think Hotel Diablo is MGK's best body of work in his discography, and I genuinely enjoy several tracks from this album. But obviously, there were still some long lasting effects from this beef. But this would be the turning point. When it seemed like he was trending in a downward direction in the rap industry, MGK did the smartest thing that he could have done. He quit rap. Kinda. It was during this Hotel Diablo release that we could see several flashes of MGK incorporating a new punk rock slash pop rock sound into his music. More specifically with the song I Think I'm Okay, which became the breakout song of the album. This was purely a pop punk rock song that got more than double the streams of any other song on Hotel Diablo. Keep this in mind for later. This experimentation continued on moving into 2020 with his collections of songs released on YouTube under the lockdown sessions. MGK was still rapping during a few of these songs, ultimately 
reportedly releasing one of my favorite rap tracks by him with Pretty Toxic Revolver, but this is also where he took that experimentation of this pop punk rock sound even further by doing a cover of Paramore's Misery Business amongst a collection of other covers of popular punk rock songs. While this was met with mixed reviews, I personally feel like this is where the full transition began to occur. Realizing the success of this untapped market, MGK began releasing original pop punk rock sounding songs that would eventually land on an upcoming album, the first of which being Bloody Valentine. Starring Megan Fox as the main character, this video would get over 110 million views making it MGK's most viewed video since I Think I'm Okay, which was the pop punk rock sounding song from Hotel Diablo, which had 105 million views. The last time he got any success even close to the numbers before this, you guessed it, Rap Devil. So with that in mind, on September 25th, 2020, just over two years after dropping Rap Devil and dissing Eminem, MGK decided to put rap on the back burner for a little bit and switch genres, switch his look, and switch his style with his pop punk rock album, Tickets to My Downfall. And this, did nothing short but absolutely revitalize and skyrocket his career out of nowhere. Tickets to My Downfall became MGK's highest selling album ever, getting 126,000 first week album sales. It was his first ever album to top the Billboard charts at number one, and it was his first album to ever be certified platinum. It became the fifth longest charting album on Billboard's top rock albums history after spending 13 weeks in the number one spot. Not to mention, the Tickets to My Downfall tour had several sold out shows. And what's that old saying? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Nearly two years after releasing his first album under this pop punk rock sound, Tickets to My Downfall, MGK would then release Mainstream Sellout, again under the same genre, getting 93,000 first week sales, becoming his second album to top the Billboard charts at number one. What's even crazier is that on this tour, he nearly sold 500,000 tickets, garnering over $33 million in ticket sales, ending his tour in Cleveland by selling out First Energy Stadium, where the Browns play. That arena can seat over 42,000 concert goers once you take away the seats that are blocked from view from the stage that they can't sell. That show alone garnered over $3 million in ticket sales. That is a lot. Judging by the streams and music video views with this album, it's certainly doing well, but not nearly doing the numbers of his previous album. But as for now, the streams and music video views are comparable to his rap music numbers before the transition. The main breakout song of this album being Emo Girl with Willow Smith and mostly because of the memes. Emo, 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 emo. Also, it's worth to note, drama continued to follow him even though he was in a different genre of music. He's already gotten into beefs and disrespected Corey Taylor, who is the lead singer of Slipknot, arguably the greatest heavy metal band to ever exist. Hey, you wanna know what I'm really happy that I'm not Doing? Being 50 years old, 50 years old, wearing a fucking weird mask on a fucking stage, talking shit. So anyway, what's everyone's favorite candy? Reese's Pieces? Despite the hiccup, MGK went on to complete a very successful tour at the end of 2022. Again, selling out the majority of his dates and ending on that massive Cleveland show. He even put out several music videos during the tour and a deluxe version of the album. The tour and 2022 closed on a very high note for MGK, but rolling around into 2023 in the earlier months of the year, MGK did something that definitely took me off guard. He dropped a rap cypher, and it was really good. A lot of people, myself included, were convinced that he had left rap music and went to the pop punk genre and was there to stay. But seemingly in response to that widespread belief, MGK would go on to release three more rap tracks after this cypher, one of which rapping on Renegade. Yes, the Eminem and Jay-Z song, Renegade. I personally would have loved to have seen this series continue throughout the year, welcoming different guests, rapping on different beats, because it reminded me of the earlier rap days from MGK MGK's career that I actually liked. And while the views weren't doing as well as the pop rock stuff that he was doing, the comments were overwhelmingly very positive. Which for me just shows that a lot of the hate he was initially getting from this beef was because of the shitty rap music from Binge. But just when it seemed like he was dipping his toes back into the rap genre, we get this. A lo-fi album. I don't know who's more confused, me or MGK, but I know we both are. But despite all of the things that have happened in the last five years, from leaving the genre, dropping a shitty rap album, dropping the most popular pop punk rock album that ever exists, dissing Corey Taylor from Slipknot, dropping a couple rap songs, then a lo-fi album. It's very clear that one thing is for certain. The exact thing that Eminem did not want to happen, happened. Now I'm in this fucking weird thing because I'm like, I gotta answer this motherfucker. And every time I do that, it makes that person as, as irrelevant as people say I am, am in hip hop, yeah. I make them bigger by getting into this thing where I'm like, I wanna destroy him. 
but I also don't want to make him bigger. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you've stuck around to right now. Again, if you want to see that video on how Killshot and Rap Devil affected Eminem in the last five years, just like the video, comment, share this, whatever the algorithm says nowadays, I don't even know anymore. Any kind of support is really dope. Subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos that I make like this. And this is my most recent song if you want to check out my music. Peace out. Any mini mini mo, I catch a hater by his toe and hang him high up in the sky until he cries to stop the jokes. I be catching bullets like Houdini, but I'll never fold because I be getting stronger with every shot like a cortisone.